Let's make America great again. A bunch of child molesting. Look at all these dusty crackers with that racist garbage on. Look at your future school shooting. That's right. Of these terrorists on the face of this earth is the pale face man, woman, and child. Y'all want to build a wall for Mexico? When's the last time you ever seen a Mexican, a Hispanic, a Native American, or a Negro shoot up a school? Yeah. Crickets! Crickets. <laughs> yeah, now you gotta run with that one. Now you gotta run with that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they look like they're about to shoot up a school right now. That's right. You don't see blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and and and, and all and nobody on the face of this earth shooting up schools, shooting up churches. Well, compared to the rates in the 80s and early 90s, crime overall is down in this country, but rampage shooters are increasingly common and they're killing more people, obviously. Almost all of them are young men. The question, which for some reason very few people ask, but is the key question is, what's driving this surge in extreme antisocial violence? Jordan Peterson, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. We wanted to ask you the question that we think too few are asking, which is, why is this happening? Why are young men shooting up schools? Because they're nihilistic and desperate. How'd they get that way? Well, I think life can make you that way unless you have a, a purpose and a, and, a, and, a, and a destiny, let's say. I mean, there's no shortage of suffering and malevolence in life, and it's easy for people to become embittered by that. And if they don't see a way out, see a way forward, they get angry about it and, and turn against life itself. And they make a display of their hatred for being by massacring the innocent. That's what's happening. It's they a, write that. They do write that. It's accelerating. Yes. The, 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 the reserve of guns has, I mean, we've had semi-automatic rifles for 100 years, but we haven't had this number of school shootings, so the attitudes are changing. I think the flag at the White House is lowered today following a mass shooting at a Las, Ve Las Vegas concert last night. 59 people have been confirmed dead, including at least two Canadians. As the world comes to grips with this tragedy, we're learning tonight our Prime Minister has spoken to the U.S. President offering his condolences. So what makes a violent act an act of terrorism? It's a question many people are asking today across the globe and on social media. Over the weekend in Edmonton, a Somali suspect there after an attack was quickly labeled as a terrorist by authorities after an ISIS flag was found in his vehicle. Though in Las Vegas, where a white man is allegedly responsible for the death of more than 50 people, officials there have yet to call this terrorism. We believe it's a local individual. He resides here locally. Um, I'm not at liberty to give you his uh, place of residence yet because it's an ongoing investigation. Uh, we don't know what his belief uh, system was at this time. And right now we believe it's a sole actor, a lone wolf type actor. It's called framing. And the way we frame these stories is, is that if it's a person of color, it must be terrorism. If it's a white person, it's probably not. It's probably a mental health issue. We are now so used to the idea that acts of violence committed by people of color must have something to do with other issues and that acts of violence committed by white people have to be mental health issues.
this Washington Post headline describes the alleged shooter as a gambler who liked country music and lived a quiet life. Memes also have been popping up on social media today, including this one from Family Guy, suggesting different classifications for different cultural backgrounds. During our Facebook Live interview with UFT's Jeffrey Dvorkin, viewers also weighed in. Anthony Garcia wrote, the motive behind this terror attack in Vegas is hate, bigotry, and racism, so now you do the math. Samantha Cato Singleton chimed in, saying, if you're white, it's not terrorism. Usually the definition of terrorism has been exclusive to politically motivated acts. Uh, but academics look to expand that definition because of the manner and the number of people that are killed in these in these kinds of attacks. So, uh, you know, it, of course, we don't know what the motive is. We don't know the information is still coming out. But, you know, I, I was just saying on Twitter, look, if, if killing 50 people and injuring 200 isn't terrorism, then, then I quit. The United States Patriot Act recently redefined domestic terrorism as anything dangerous to human life. Earlier today, ISIS claimed responsibility, saying the shooter converted to Islam just weeks ago. Well, the claims by the terrorist organization have yet to be confirmed. Valentine's Day 2018, the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 students and teachers were killed. Students recorded the incident as they hid. We initially thought it was a drill, so we are all taking our time. We heard more gunshots, and that was when we realized this was not a drill. Police say the gunman, 20-year-old Nicholas Cruz, confessed to the massacre. He pled not guilty. This wasn't the only school shooting. On May 18th, Nine students and one teacher were shot and killed at Santa Fe High School outside Houston. I should have been going through this at my school. 17-year-old Demetrius Pagorgis was identified as the shooter. Students say he yelled surprise when he burst into an art class and opened fire. You can hear gunshots in the police transmissions. Still have several more shots. He's actually shooting. He's in the art room. We've got we got shots fired right now, guys. We need to help you. A newsroom was the scene of another mass shooting. On June 28, a gunman walked into the Capitol Gazette newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland, killing five people. Somebody was shot. Someone was shot. The gunman, identified as Jared Ramos, had allegedly been upset over an article published by the newspaper detailing how he harassed a woman on social media. He has pled not guilty. Then, on the morning of October 27th, a house of worship was targeted when a gunman entered the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh. Suspects talking about uh, all these Jews need to die. Eleven people were killed. I spoke to 76-year-old Barry Werber, who survived the shooting. I went to the door and I pushed it open and I saw one of the bodies on the steps. The suspect, 46-year-old Robert Bowers, could get the death penalty if convicted. Not even two weeks later, on November 7th, all of America was saying not again after 12 people lost their lives when a crazed gunman opened fire at the Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks, California. College students were enjoying country music night when mayhem broke out. 28-year-old Ian David Long, a former Marine, was identified as the shooter and was found dead at the scene. A year of terror and heart-wrenching pain. That deadly rampage at a Florida bank tonight. We have now learned that all five victims were women, one of them a mother of seven. And tonight, what the gunman's former girlfriend has now revealed. ABC's chief national affairs correspondent, Tom Yamas, is in Sebring, Florida tonight. Today, 21-year-old Zephin Zaver facing a judge and charged with five counts of premeditated homicide murder. Police say the alleged shooter walked into the SunTrust bank with a bulletproof vest and a 9mm handgun forcing the four employees and loan customer to the ground, shooting them execution style. All five victims were women. Just moments before the shooting began, 75-year-old Victor Sparks tried entering the bank, but the doors had already been locked by the alleged gunman. I was so thankful for the, for the fast response. And I would say probably in three minutes there were eight 
uh, police cars there. Police then ramming the entrance when Zaver refused to surrender. At that point, were you under the assumption the victims may still be alive? We hoped the victims were alive. But it was too late. And now a young woman who says she's the shooter's ex-girlfriend says she warned people about his alleged desire to kill. Talking about guns and wanting guns and she wants to hurt people physically. Tonight, police releasing the names of three of the victims. Marisol Lopez, a teller at the bank. Cynthia Watson, the loan customer. And Anna Pignon Williams, who had just started working there a few weeks ago and a mother to seven children. Loving her was easy. Living without her will be hard. And Tom Yamas with us live tonight from Sebring, Florida. And Tom, I, I know still no known motive. And there was one person you learned in that bank who did manage to escape. David, we just learned that incredible piece of information moments ago. Police telling us there was another bank employee who was in the back of the building in a break room. And when this person heard the gunshots, they took off running, calling 911 along the way. And David, you mentioned investigators have no motive. What they do have is video surveillance. And they say it will show this was a calculated mass shooting and not a bank robbery. David? All right, just an awful story. But Tom Yamas, our thanks to you tonight. A manhunt is underway in Louisiana after police say that five people were killed Saturday in two separate but connected shootings. The shooting spree happened about an hour west of New Orleans. A married couple are among the victims. Police have identified their 21-year-old son, Dakota Terrio, as a suspect. Investigators are also looking into whether he had a romantic relationship with one of the other victims. Terrio remains on the run. Police say that he should be considered armed and dangerous, and anyone who spots him should avoid making contact. Breaking tonight, we have learned the identities of five people who authorities believe were shot to death at a property in Polk County. This is our first look at the victims, one of whom we're told was a one-year-old little girl. The Polk County Sheriff's Office and the Texas Rangers have been on scene all day in Livingston, about 75 miles northeast of Houston. More specifically, the 3600 block of FM 3126. And our Sophia Beausoleil is joining us now from the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Sophia, such a tragedy, and it may have a Facebook component as well. That is correct, Bill. It's been a very sad day for this community, the family involved, and law enforcement. The Polk County Sheriff's Office tells us that the five people who died from apparent gunshot wounds were all members of the same family. The Sheriff's Office also told us that they are waiting on the medical examiner's report to determine who exactly was the shooter, and they want to let the public know that tonight they do not believe, again, they do not believe that the community is in danger. On most days, neighbors will tell you the 3600 block of FM 3126 is usually quiet. But Monday morning, the red roofed home on the Delaney Ranch became a crime scene. It's just so sad. Like, this doesn't happen on an everyday basis. It's Polk County. This is a, a horrible, horrific scene. The Polk County Sheriff's Office says around 1032 Monday morning, they received a phone call for EMS and police at this home in the Blanchard community. They found 15-month-old Ranley Horn, her mother, 27-year-old Ashley Horn, and great-grandmother, 72-year-old Linda Delaney, dead outside their home with gunshot wounds. Inside the home, they found the child's great-grandfather, 74-year-old Carlos Delaney, and the little girl's father, 54-year-old Randy Horn, dead with gunshot wounds as well. But authorities say there was a survivor, Ashley Horn's mother. This female was locked in a back bedroom. This female is the one who actually called the outside person who, who called our agency to alert us to what, what had happened. As to who the shooter was, Chief Deputy Lyon says they are waiting on the medical examiner's office, but they are looking into cryptic messages Randy Horn posted on Facebook. He was Ashley's husband and Randy's dad. We are aware of the uh, Facebook page made by uh, Randy Horn. Um, we are in the process of trying to determine if that if that actual picture that he take that he took is part of our crime scene here or did it take place at a location that he was at last night and as the investigation continues a community now tries to cope with the unthinkable pray for this family pray for this community this is something that will rock the community uh, as well as the law enforcement now, in regards to that picture that the sheriff's deputy was talking about, we did not post that on our story because it is graphic in nature. This is still very much an ongoing investigation, and we are told that they did seize some firearms from the property along with some pets from the property. But again, we'll learn more details tomorrow as we check back with Polk County Sheriff's Office. Reporting live from Polk County, Sophia Bosley, KPRC, Channel 2 News.